Good afternoon, this is Chad Nash with Inner Lion, and uh, today I am proud that we're doing our, our fourth cubicle interview with Victor Razi uh, with Razi Empowerment Group uh, here in San Diego. So welcome, Victor. I appreciate you coming in. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, so we have a special guest with us today, the, the Inner Lion here. Um, uh, you know, as you know, we've discussed this, this painting and what it means to me as far as like a cubicle and a cubicle setting. And uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to call these the cubicle interviews has just been just based on the fact that uh, we're often larger than where we're currently at. And, you know, you can sort of see that this, this represents that. Um, so why do you feel like, tell us a little bit of history about your work environment. Have you come from a cubicle? Have no cubicle experiences. Okay. Okay. My background was mostly sales. Retail sales in, in large corporations, majority of those corporations are done, are bankrupt. So uh, my background was involved speaking to a lot of people, uh, influencing them or persuading them and buying our products or services. So I was, I was very, very, very good in motivating people, getting people excited to buy the product service at that time that I was representing. But I was never locked down in a cubicle. Go, that's not me and. Uh, I would have gone crazy if I was nine to five. Yeah. So it was all about communicating with people, moving around, playing with with toys, and, and uh, so that's well, my, my well, the, the well, good for you. Right good for you, Victor. That's great. I I think what you hit on there is like really powerful because when you look at all the most successful people, whether uh, no matter how you measure success, they tend to be doing their passion and what they you know what they're on their own really, um, and so. Do you think it's our school system, the way we're brought up, the way that, you know, we think it's stable? Like, what do you think causes right. the belief system? Because yeah. you and I have talked a lot about beliefs. Right. And, and what do you think that's, when do you think that really is enforced? From the parents? You know, I, I truly believe just a combination of, of various, various of things. But most important, I believe that a lot of that conditioning programming first comes from parents or whoever they were raised from. A lot of people were not raised from their parents, maybe grandma or grandpa. And I truly believe that also the school system does have a huge impact because the school, by my experience and experience by others and what I've been trained and heard from other trainers as well, is that the, the schools don't really support imagination, they don't really support creativity, they don't really formal schools. There are schools out there that are now are gearing more to people's intuition and imagination. But even in that sense, it's very limited. But the, the your formal school systems, they don't support creativity, they don't support imagination, they don't support int, uh, intuition, they don't support creative ideas. You must follow our program, you must learn history, even though they believe that support and I truly believe learning about history just repeats the same right. stuff that either has not uh, been successful or been very, very impactful on people. So they make them learn things that they don't want to learn mm -hmm. and they teach them that you must follow a certain path, a certain program to be successful or what they consider to be successful, which is school, which is college, which is, you know, that formal path. I think, I think people would rather be almost unhappy than uncertain and they think that there's a certainty they're, they're, they're thinking that there is um, it's kind of like a lot of parents they don't mean to do it but there's this idea that if my son or daughter is in a state if it's in a job that's consistent then you know everybody will be happy they're gonna have food on the table a lot of the idea yeah. of that then then pushing themselves to go further and taking a risk they don't want to see them fail, you know. And a lot of it's fear-based. It's all fear-based, right? A lot right? of it's fear-based. The only reason why uh, these school systems, a lot of governments, a lot of religion, a lot of parents try to control because the reality is they're afraid. Because if you don't behave the way I want you to behave, if you don't act the way I want you to act, if you don't do the things the way I want you to do, then I'm not in control. Therefore, I'm afraid. The two main weapons that people have, religion, governments, medical communities, parents, it's fear or guilt. If they don't get you by fear, they will get you by guilt. If you don't do this, you go to jail, you go to hell, you go somewhere else. Right. And if you do it, you feel the guilt. Right. That's the two main weapons. And so, but trust me when I say this, a lot of times their intentions is positive. They do have mm -hmm. loving intentions. They do have 
intentions where I do want my child or my student or whatever to uh, be a successful person. So the best thing that, that in, my, in my belief, in my opinion, the best thing that schools can do, parents can do for their children is to be what your child, what you want your child to be. To do what your child want, what you want your child to do, and to have what you what you what you want your child to have, not what you think they should have, not what you should or what they should do, have to do. But if you want your children to be a particular person, you better be that particular person. That's great. Period. So living the example. Yes. If you want your child to do something, then you better be doing that. What you want your child to do. If you want your child or your stu or your student to have something, you better have that. What you want your child to do. That's great. I love that. Or be your, you know. So it, 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 you're the. That's very different yeah. than. I mean, in a way, the way the way you hear, it's like it's like oh. Well, I want this for my child. I want this for my. But they're the opposite, right? And and, and usually they're they're coming from fear. Mm -hmm. So your your child or your student, they don't really listening. They're they're not really getting what you're saying. They're more feeling what you're saying. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's, it doesn't really matter. You can you can you can read a powerful book on positive affirmation to your child, but as you read it, you're reading it based on fear, based on anger, based on whatever. Your child or your student will feel more of that and will incorporate or be programmed or conditioned or be more influenced on the emotions, on the tonality, rather than the words that you're saying. Almost like we have vibrations or something. No, no, it's it's all vibrations. Vibrations. I know, it's all vibrations. That's, That's what we're learning, right? Yeah. So, okay, so you're in empowerment. Uh, you've been doing this for a while now, and, and that's, that's awesome. What do you think um, are the best way to, to conquer through some of those? Like... I know that that's a process to get beyond those beliefs and to move, you know, move past those. What would you say are just a few basic principles you would live by for the, to, you know, to get past the block? You know, if I'm if I'm in if I'm in a cubicle right now, yeah. I'm in a cubicle. I've got rent to pay, and I, I don't know if I start my own business, if I do my own thing. My my son just graduated, you know, just started just started kindergarten. Mm -hmm. I'm living in fear. If that's if that's where I'm at, that might be where I'm at. And if I'm there, which is okay, which is okay. Which is so, okay. what would you say would be a few tips tips for them? Start with the belief. It, it, it goes back to awareness. First of all, be aware that you can change. Okay, because awareness is the first step in all healing and all change. Uh, so, have the belief that first of all you can change, and most important, have the belief that is your birthright as a human, to be, to do, and to have everything that you want. The majority of people that come to my seminars, my classes, my clients, they have a belief within them, or a part within them, that they're not good enough, they're not deserving enough, or it's not possible for them to be, to do, and to have what everything they want. Mm -hmm. Because of the limitations of the restrictions from their parents from schools. Because mm -hmm. of that control factor, that fear factor. Mm -hmm. And if they truly get to a point, which they can and they will, if that is their desire, if they get to a point where they truly believe that everything's possible for them, mm -hmm. that they don't need to do anything, that anytime you tell yourself that, anytime you're telling yourself, I have to do this, I should do this, I need to do this, that's not you talking to you. That is your parents talking to you. That is the school talking to you. That is religion talking to you. That is government. Anytime you hear, I, you know, tell you so I should, no, -uh. it's not about I should do, I have to, I need to do. It's about what you want to do, what you desire to do, what you dream to do, and having the belief that is, that is possible, that is your birth. As a, we as humans, we as human beings, we came to this wonderful earth to do everything that we can dream of, that we can imagine of, that we can believe. If you can imagine it, if you can dream it, if you can visualize it, then you can do it. Because everything starts with imagination. Everything starts with the thought. Everything starts with the idea. Before this became a physical manifestation, someone had to think about it. Someone had to imagine it. Someone had to have an idea of it. And then the manifestation becomes real. Easy. It's just, you allow it. I'm empowered now. This is go. inner line coming out. So what is it that you do? Because we all experience fear. That emotion is there. So when you feel it, you would say the first thing to do would be to say consciously awareness, oh, I'm feel I, I am fear is fear is coming by. Yeah. Then then what would you do next? 
most most important thing, first of all, do not deny it. Mm -hmm. So most people don't want to be afraid. Actually, I will say everyone, I will, they don't want to be afraid. Okay? They either see it as some weakness, they see it as something bad. I truly believe that emotions, they're not just thinking as negative emotions. I truly believe that all emotions are good because emotions tell you where you stand in your point of attraction or your point of vibration. What are you attracting to yourself based on your thoughts? Your emotions are your guiding system. So if you're feeling fear, it's because you have an unwanted thoughts, you're having fearful thoughts. So it's not about denying your fear, it's not about rejecting your fear. It's not about trying to suppress your fear. It's about accepting it, thanking, thanking it, and letting it go, and turning that fear into excitement. Because most successful people, including myself, when we're doing a when we're doing a major presentation, a major uh, seminar, we do feel that anxiety. But the majority of people will focus on that anxiety and, and, will, and focus on that fear, and then will allow that fear to make them stuck or make them forget their words, or cancel whatever they're about to do. But most successful people, they will accept that fear and then turn that fear into excitement, turn that fear into some type of energetic state, and work with it, and allow, them, allow that excitement, which was fear in the beginning, to empower them and allow them to shine and speak up. Let's ask one last question. So, um, the next time, we we come here. Where where do you want to be yourself in the in five years? I definitely want to reach out more to the masses. I, I definitely see myself doing more international traveling and doing these empowerment seminars, these empowering workshops uh, in different countries and reaching out more to the masses. My my greatest passion, my purpose, is to spread self awareness of self healing through self love, and majority of people out there. They, they don't love themselves, or they think they love themselves. What they really love is their ego, but in order to love them, love thyself, you need to know self. And a lot of people don't, do not know themselves because one, they're afraid to find out who are their true selves. Because the moment you take responsibility for your actions or your environment with a wanted and wanted, you become powerful now. Well, thank you, Victor. Um, Razi Empowerment Center up in, in North North Solana Beach. Solana Beach at this Solana moment. Beach. Yeah. So we're expanding and uh, we're growing. So. Well, hey, thank you very thank you. much. Yes. Um, this will be uh, our fourth uh, cubicle interview. Uh, so the book will be out in, later on this fall, thelionandthecubicle.com or Inner Lion. So uh, check us out at uh, is it youtube.com slash yourinnerlion or, or innerlion.com. Thanks, and we'll see you soon.